Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Tag Time. This is gonna be part two of the message that we started last week. And I just wanna call it material mindset. We're gonna look some more about our mindset concerning our, concerning, me, our material goods. And so we're dealing with a thing that's called materialism and stuff like that, which is basically just a concept that talks about how much or how much we value, how much we pay attention to material goods. So like tangible things, things we can touch, things we can feel, have, and hold. But welcome back. I'm glad that you're here. I appreciate you taking this time to come and get the word in each and every week. Thank you for doing that. And God bless you for doing that. Because this is how we grow in our relationship with him. And before I forget, make sure that you sign up uh, for our tag team update so I can just send you out a note just a few times a week so that we can kind of stay in contact and stuff like that. So if you want to be on that list just to get a few updates and stuff like that during the week, text the word tag, T-A-G-G, to the phone number 713 903 8533-713-903-8533 so that you can be on the list. I'm not going to bug you. I'm not going to be texting you every day and stuff like that. But I would love an opportunity to encourage you and remind you and stuff. So go ahead and text that right now. All right. I hope you're done. Now I know it takes a little bit longer than that, but don't forget, I'll try and remind you at the end. All right, so the Lord has put on my heart, we're doing part two today. And again, we're talking about our material mindset. How do we see our stuff? You know, stuff can be super important to us at different times in our lives or all of our life. Things can be so important to us sometimes that they overshadow and and are overvalued compared to everything else. And so we want to make sure that we see stuff, we see materials, we see our phones, our toys, our clothes, all that kind of stuff. We want to make sure that we see everything in the right perspective. Because again, as believers, we're supposed to see the way, see things the way God instructs us to see them. We want to live our life to be an example, a good example of the believer. And so in order for us to do that, we want to study scripture, see what God tells us about how we're supposed to live. And then we want to work all of our lives to do that. And that's what we do day in and day out. We continue to put our face in the word and allow God to help change us into the image that he created us for. So we're going to go back in the Bible to Matthew chapter six. All right. So if you could go over there, New Testament or Old Testament, New Testament. Very good. It's the first book of the New Testament. Going to go to Matthew chapter six. You can swipe there, turn there, tap there, and we're going to read some scriptures. I want to get through more scriptures today and then Uh, That'll be it for this uh, message time. But I really want to focus on some of the words in there. But again, we're talking about our mindset, how we see our stuff. Again, it's very, very important. There are times, you know, maybe movies that we watch or people that we see. The most important thing to them are the things they have. You know, have you ever seen a child maybe at a birthday party or something like that? And sometimes they don't get exactly what they want and they like pitch a fit. They cry. They're so upset because they didn't get this one thing that they wanted, even though they may have gotten five other things, even though they may have gotten things that were actually better and they just don't realize that they're better. But because they didn't get the thing they want, they think every, you know, their life is over. Things are so terrible. Sometimes when we go to school, we judge each other and people judge us sometimes based on the name brand of the clothes we wear. If what kind, what type of phone we have, you know, I remember y'all ragging me all the time about my old old phone because I would, you know, notoriously have an old phone, which is fine with me. It's not a big deal for me, but, you know, people be talking about me because, you know, my phone wouldn't be up to date and that's all right. That's whatever. But sometimes material goods can be so important to people um, that it's almost more important than anything else. I remember when I was coming up, Jordans were a new thing. And I remember people like actually getting shot because of the shoes that they had. People were shooting and killing other people because they wanted their shoes. Sometimes people are are, uh, endangering others' lives because of a car that they want and they want to take their car, all these different kinds of things. So those people are focused on the material goods in an absolutely unhealthy way. But also if we are focused on material things in an unhealthy way, it's going to cause our lives to not be enjoyed the way that they're supposed to be enjoyed. We're not going to be able to 
focus on what God has for us to focus on because we're too focused on our, our clothes are a year old and we knew need, we need new clothes. Not because anything is wrong with the clothes we have. We need them because we want what's new, what's fresh, what's different. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter six. Sure, you're there. I'm going to start at verse 19 and I'm going to read through 19 because I really talked a lot about that last week. If you didn't watch last week, go back and watch it. It's on the YouTube so you can watch it again and then I don't have to go back over it. So it says in verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust dust corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth dust corrupt nor or where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So in context, he's not telling us to never save money. He's not telling us that we shouldn't have things that we treasure on earth. He's saying that uh, the most important treasure, he's saying that we should not consider the stuff that we lay up on earth to be our treasure. If you think about pirates or uh, whoever in a treasure hunt, when we you know, have the stuff in the chest, those things are the most important, the most valuable. So when we think about this life and we think about what is most important, what is most valuable, that's what we want to call treasure. So again, he's not saying we shouldn't save money. He's not saying that we shouldn't have nice stuff. He's saying we shouldn't treasure that stuff. We shouldn't consider that stuff to be the most important stuff to us. Yes, we can have it. We can like it. But the key is really in verse 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if we have uh, or if we consider our stuff super valuable and we consider our stuff to be very um to be the most important to us, then that's where our heart is going to be. And if our heart is with stuff, our heart is not with people. Our, if our heart is with stuff, our heart is not with God because we value the stuff more than those other things. So uh, what we are trying to learn and figure out here is how to define treasure. How do we define the things that are most important to us? Not that we can't have nice things, but the nice things should not be what we consider treasure or the most important things in our lives. All right, going on. Verse 22 says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body should be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So he's saying that, you know, the light comes in our bodies through the eyes or what we're focused on, what we're looking at, what we see and what we value uh, and how we behold it with our eyes. We're either going to have light coming in through, uh, through our eyes or we're going to allow darkness to be coming into our bodies through our eyes. So when we are looking at things, when we're valuing things, um, we're going to be full of light or we're going to be full of darkness and it comes down to how much we value stuff. Do we value stuff or do we value the things of God? That's the question. And again, you can value the things of God and still have stuff and like stuff, but you can't value stuff and be about the things of God. Why? The next verse says, uh, where do you go? Verse 24, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. Cannot serve God and mammon. God is saying we can't uh, treasure stuff and him. We can't serve those two guys. We can't have those two things on equal pedestals because you're going to go toward one and push away the other. So if we are valuing stuff, if we treasure stuff, if stuff is so important to us, then we're going to go there and we're not going to be able to serve and worship God the way that he wants us to because God wants us to be givers. But we can't be givers if we're so... Uh, impressed by our stuff and trying to get more and more stuff, we're not going to do what God wants us to do. So we're going to be drawn toward that. And because we keep hearing God tell us to, to give or to sow or to love others, we're going to start to despise his word and be drawn toward the stuff. Well, the same way, if we focus on God, it's not that we can't have stuff, but that stuff isn't going to be so important to us. We're not going to risk our following God to have or to get stuff. And that's super duper important and the key we're going to find is in our heart. So we can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. Verse 25 says, therefore, 
I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat and what you shall drink. And not yet, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is, is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Raiment is another uh, word for clothes. It said, behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Are you not much better than a bird? So he's telling us in a word that we should not be all consumed with what we're going to wear. We shouldn't be all consumed with what we're going to eat. Our minds should not be all consumed with, with things that are about providing for ourselves. God is telling us that we can either focus on him or we can focus on other stuff, but we can't do both. All right. A lot of people say multitasking is a myth that we can't do a whole bunch of things at one time. So we have to choose. Am I going to focus and go toward God? Or am I going to focus and go toward stuff? So he says, take no thought. That doesn't mean that we should wear and look like trash. It doesn't mean that we should never go to the store and get food because we shouldn't be worried about that. Again, we have to have to keep things in context. He's saying that our life's driving force should not be taking care of ourselves, uh, what we're wearing, what we're eating, how we look to other people, if we have this or if we have that. A few more verses, uh, verse 27, he says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? You know, you've been thinking about this stuff all the time, but your thoughts aren't going to change anything. You can't add one hair to your head or one inch to your height by simply thinking, 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 thinking. So we shouldn't be thinking about how we're going to get stuff all the time. We shouldn't be thinking about what other people think. And so we're so concerned and worried about what we think they think. We don't know what to think. Look at verse number 28. Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the, lily, the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. We can just go along with life and allow God to bless us, satisfy us. And he's saying then that we will have what we need as we're going to see a couple verses down. It says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which to this, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after these things the Gentiles or the non-believers seek. It's a big deal to non-believers what they're going to eat and, and how they're going to provide to themselves. But it's not supposed to be the same with the Christian. This is what we're seeing in God's word. It doesn't mean that we don't go to work. It doesn't mean that we don't plan. But the most important thing should not be us taking care of ourselves. God wants to play a role in that. And we can either allow him to or we can shut him out and keep him out. It says, for your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Okay, God knows that, I, uh, that we need these things. He's not telling us to go without things. He's just telling us how to view things, how our mindset should be concerning our material. It says in verse 33, here's another big part. This is the second most important verse. The first verse is where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, in verse 21. The second most important verse, and the very important thing for us to think about is verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you so like I just told you moments ago it's not that God wants us to go without it's not that God doesn't want us to care about anything it's not like God wants us to go live in the woods and 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 where leaves no he wants us to be blessed he wants us to have clothes that we like he wants us to eat well and to do well but he's telling us instead of going directly for it and having it be such a big important thing in our minds and we are supposed to first seek him and his righteousness being in right standing with him and doing things that, that he has for us to do seek that first and it says he will bless us and bring to us all those other things that we need. So that, my friends, should really take a whole lot of pressure off of us. It's not up to us. We don't have to completely 
plan and do and, and be responsible for getting all of our stuff. God says if we seek him, he'll help us with the stuff. That's it, my friends. That's it for Tag Time this week. Again, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Don't forget, get on the list. We can get some updates to you, some encouragements and reminders. to send the word TAG, T-A-G-G, to 713-903-8533. We'll make sure that you're on the list. Can't wait to see you next time. That's it for this week. TAG, you're it.